Hello comrades, Commissar Bro here today with another mod overview of the newest version of my great war mod that I'm making for Djibouti. That's right. This particular mod, well, really scenario, eh, <laughs> I'm not going to say mod because I haven't really modded anything into The game has been modified to a, an extent, but only within the confines of the editor. And nothing extremely insane. I mean, the scenario as it was previously is completely different uh, than it is now. So we're going to start out with me just talking about some of the additional countries that has been put into making history the Great War. First off, obviously, Djibouti has been added in. That's right. And you like that little flag there. I managed to find that one. I very much like it. Uh, then you've got Somalia, Eritrea, and uh, we also added in uh, this, this, the new Nubian Kingdom, as I'm calling it. Yes, very unoriginal, I'm aware. And then the Emirate of Kudai, another uh, country that has been created in Africa. Uh, and then the Sultanate of Darfur, while not a new country, has been made bigger uh, to reflect uh, having basically having more importance and the ability to actually fight uh, the enemy. And then I think, did I make this one? A, I don't think, no, 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 I didn't make that a country. Okay, yeah, I didn't do that one yet. I was thinking about it, but I don't think I actually got to it. Um, so, and then finally, the Rifters Union. Uh, yes, now this is one of those a little bit more extreme new countries. The idea behind it is think Mad Max. They like cars and diesel and shit. That's the only love they have. And, uh, yes, nice, nice stuff there. So, basically, the premise of adding all these countries in is to actually give a player who plays as Djibouti, or honestly any of these guys, something to do. Because when it's owned by the greater powers of the world, when all the territory, it's pretty much impossible to take Djibouti and be able to do anything, like, substantial with it. Um, I have managed to conquer this whole region here, uh, so far, and that was before I added in the additional countries. Um, so it is possible. It's uh, it's not super easy, but I would say it's about moderate difficulty. It's not too hard either. You just got to be very careful and plan uh, out ahead of time before you do anything, and you know you should be pretty successful. All right, with that in mind, let's go take a look real quick at Asia. So I added in the Mugsical Empire. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's a very hard, hard name to pronounce. Oh, and one other African nation I forgot. The Realm of Mad Agascar. That's right. The Mad King Agascar took over and pushed the French out and created the Realm of Mad Agascar. You see what I did there? Mad Agascar? Ha <laughs> ha! You could just tell the Commissars of a flowing with originality. Anyway. So yes, the Mugsical Empire, which obviously is a play on the Mughal and the Sikh empires, respectively. Um, it's to give something to do with India. I might even divide India up into like four or five separate countries in the future. I'm not sure, because again, it's another one of those situations, yeah, I'm weakening the shit out of the English, but it makes the game more interesting when there's more countries and more inter- uh, political stuff going on. So honestly, my mod is kind of turning into like a Shattered World type scenario. Um, except everything is pretty much uh, explained. There's actually like a history behind it rather than it just being province, 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 so on and so forth. Uh, we've also added in Vietnam, as you can see. I wasn't really original with Vietnam, just called them Vietnam. Uh, keep in mind, the descriptions of all of the countries relatively that have been added in uh, have been changed and will be updated periodically uh, as I decide to update them and get them rolling along. The only major countries that haven't been changed right now are Russia and Austro-Hungary and the Ottoman Empire. Those are the only three that have not been changed. Aside from that, everything else has been updated to more accurately reflect what's going on. Uh, in this this alternate history we've got going on here. So anyway, uh, then I've added in the communist Chinese. They've pretty much spread into the entire Northwest, as you can see. Um, they're supposed to be a major threat to the Republic of China, but the AI is not all that intelligent. And it pretty much immediately declares war 
on uh, Tibet, and Tibet kicks their ass just about every time, uh, which is, makes for an interesting game for sure, but it's most certainly not exactly what you want to happen. But again, you know, if a player actually took control of it, it would make for an actual interesting scenario of trying to keep the country from collapsing under, uh, you know, st basically very stressful economic conditions. Um, they, you still had the Republic of China. I decided to keep them in. However, I've also added a few more states. The Fengtian State, as you can see here, uh, based out of Fengtian. That's right, in Manchuria, that region there, just north of Korea. However, you can see they also own a few pieces of Korea. They're meant to be kind of like a warlord state, kind of like the Gangshi clique, uh, or Yunnan, during World War II, um, except up here in Fengtian, like in the Manchuria region. I've been considering on breaking Russia up maybe a little bit, but I haven't come up with any good ideas yet. So, yeah, that's still up in the air. Um, so, with that in mind... You also have Korea, which again, uh, the idea behind Korea is that they manage to defeat the Japanese and maintain control of their home country. However, because they were assisted by the Chinese and the Russians, um, the Chinese asked for a little piece of land, being Chang'an and Pyongan. However, um, with the rise of the warlords in Feng Tian, Obviously, these territories were lost uh, to the Chinese and to the Koreans. So the Koreans hold no real loyalty to this new upstart warlord state in the north. And obviously, they hold no alliance with the Japanese in the east. So that also brings us to the Japanese. I haven't done much with the Isle. I haven't made like a bunch of different clans or not. But I did make one. I made the Hokkaido Union, essentially, which they hold all the northern Japanese regions and even the whole island of Sakhalin. So I thought that would be interesting. I considered breaking Japan up into a bunch of little pieces, but I don't know if I'm going to do that. That seems a bit extreme um, at this juncture. Plus, it seems like a lot of work, and I don't know if it's something I'm going to do. Finally, there's two more countries that have been added uh, into this region. The Ranbai Rui Dynasty. Essentially, this is a group that's based out of Taiwan, Formosa more specifically, um, who has imperialist ambitions. They want to uh, pretty much put the empire back together, the, the, the old Chinese empire. They want to reunite China back under the banner of a new emperor, being the Ranbai Ri dynasty. That's right, and as you can see, they've made gains up these islands against the Japanese all the way up to the Amami Islands, and uh, they own territories in the actual mainland China, as well as the north part of the Philippines. Finally, the Philippines have also been added into the game as a playable country. Now, the Philippines may be a bit hard to play as, but again, I haven't tested them out. And as a matter of fact, pretty much none of these countries I've tested out aside from Djibouti. Uh, because it's time consuming and I just don't really have time to test it. I do know that the world tends to digrade into a, a, a very war-torn place full of rebels and stuff within about 200 turns. But anyway... So that brings us to Europe. Now, Europe has actually gone through some major changes as well. The first point being the uh, the addition of a Prussian state called the Königsreich. That's right. Now, they don't have control of Brandenburg, but they are most certainly not pro-German. Um, and you can see I kind of left a couple of German assets over the border un un by accident. Don't worry, they'll walk out. No big deal. And even I left a few Russian things there, too. Yeah, all, <laughs> still a work in progress, mind you. So the Königsreich is an attempt to weaken Germany, obviously. Um, it was created out of the fictional war that occurred between the French and the German uh, around the 1905 era uh, time period. Essentially, I guess I'll explain the rest of these countries, and then I'll kind of get to that, really. Um, so basically... 
you have Luxembourg here. You can see that Luxembourg has become powerful. You can see that there is the Huescatain Collective, which is supposed to be like an extremist Catholic religion um, where it, it, it basically they're they're very, very extreme. Like <laughs> high, think hive mind and fanatics and stuff like that. They're, they're crazy is what they're meant to be. Um, and so essentially you can see France has lost gains against the Huescatain uh, Collective. They've lost... Uh, you know, the whole southern, southwestern part of their country, and even Spain has lost a few territories uh, to them. So the Huescatain Collective are essentially a, a pretty decent threat to France. Now, if France turns all their guns on them at once, it'll be a pretty easy steamroll. But the, 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 the initial loss of those lands kind of inspired Germany to declare war on France. And uh, basically, France was getting its <laughs> butt whipped, uh, for lack of a better phrase. And the Germans, pretty much within sight of defeating the French, were declared war on by the, the uh, people of Luxembourg, who very deftly came in from the rear of the German armies and forced a very devastating, uh, con <laughs> like con basically a conceding surrender in this case, an un 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 unconcessional surrender. Um, conditional, sorry, an unconditional surrender, which the Germans were forced to actually give up regions that they had control of, being the Rhineland Palatinate and uh, right, like right here, the Alsace-Lorraine. Alsace and the French were so kind to actually let the Luxembourg keep the Meuse uh, region, and I just kind of gave Wallonia to them because why the fuck not, essentially. But, uh, yeah, so you kind of have Luxembourg as a more serious power that exists in the world now. Now, of course, they're not that threatening, but their armies are pretty decent sized, and they could probably kick a few asses along the way. Uh, and they provide an incredibly powerful buffer between Germany and France. Now, keep in mind... Uh, this this loss of, of, of face, essentially, the Kaiser's defeat to France uh, led to, you know, basically Prussian nationalists to create the Königsreich, uh, which, you know, is, is this current situation in Central Europe, this Central and Western Europe, essentially. This is, the, it's a pretty, pretty bleak outlook for Germany. However, Germany is still an incredibly powerful nation with the first most powerful army, fourth best industry, third technology, and third in influence. So honestly, Germany has been hurt, but they are not out by no means of the imagination. Uh, some additional changes I've made is I've added some regions to Romania, uh, specifically these two, to just make them better. Again, there's a couple of units I haven't swapped over to Romanian uh, control essentially but you know it I might fix it I might just leave it either which way it doesn't really matter because they're gonna move out anyway I also gave Montenegro one additional province from the uh, Habsburg Empire there because I felt like Montenegro's biggest problem was it just it, it it's so not pertinent to anything going on in the rest of the world right now so it's like you know just make them a give them one extra thing maybe they'll might be able to do something so to make them a bit more interesting. I've also included a new faction called the Sicil the Sicilian the Sicilian Syndicate. The idea is they're supposed to be kind of a um, a criminal, a very powerful criminal organization that has uh influence all over the world essentially. And again, I'm still working out the kinks to that to make more with that scenario. And uh as you can see, Italy, the actual kingdom of Italy, has lost influence and power to the Sicilian syndicate where it's so severe that literally they don't own the bottom half of Italy. So to them, that's a bit concerning and the, the power of the syndicate is steadily growing. One other thing I do want to mention uh, before I go into any more of the countries that I have added is the population numbers have been redone in all sorts of different countries. Um, to basically, I did that to make uh, larger armies, to make more intense fights, 
uh, and more industry and to make it harder to play as a country because the more population you have, the less food you're going to end up having and so on. Basically, the scenario that I want the end game to be is a dystopian, very shitty situation that it's going to be kind of tough to manage and win, essentially. That's the whole idea of this particular scenario, this mod. Uh, another country that's been added is the Anarchy of Ireland. Again, use your imagination with this one, because this one is supposed to be like, uh, this... Ireland revolted against England, and obviously the uh, the British populace was like, no, fuck that. We don't care if the Irish don't want to be a part of the United Kingdom anymore. Then let them go. You know what? We're not wasting any more British, any more English or Scottish blood on trying to keep them in the kingdom. So the British forces were pretty much the British government didn't want to give up, but they had to. They were forced to give it up, and they. Uh, went, you know, moved all their forces out. So now Ireland is caught in an incredibly bloody struggle uh, between multiple factions and just, it's pretty much an anarchy. It is quite literally an anarchy. And you will notice within the first 15 turns or so that the anarchy of Ireland will be wiped out and it will be replaced with something else. So that's kind of the purpose there. It's It's meant to be like, yeah, I want this to be something else, but I want to see... Who wins that? Like, is it going to be the socialist, the nationalist? Is it going to be, uh, you know, the, the 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 Democrats? Essentially, who's going to win the fight in Ireland to actually make it its own country? Essentially. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, all right. And there's three other countries in Africa. I think I made Liberia a little bit bigger. By the way, I pretty much just gave them resource deposits to again make them a little more prevalent, more prominent. They're still not a bunch of cities to build off of, so it's not like too much is going to happen with that. I've also included the Mor the Morris Berber Federation, which is essentially supposed to be like a combination of the Morris and the Berber tribes uh, that fought off the French and actually managed to secure a rather large uh, area of, of land, uh, which is now their, their domain, essentially. Again, they've only got two cities, but they have pretty decent resources. They, well, no, they have three cities. So they have three cities. They have pretty decent resources. Uh, so they had the potential to industrialize and become incredibly powerful and quite a threat in the future. Uh, you also have the Tunisian state, and I've seen these guys in action. These guys have turned out incredibly well. Um, I actually watched them basically beat the ever-loving shit out of the Italians and take over Libya. And they moved all the way over here uh, close to Egypt. So it was it was incredibly impressive, and I, it, and that was completely on the AI's whim. I had nothing to do with that. Uh, and as you can see, I didn't start them out with an army or anything. They did it all by themselves. Uh, so it was pretty impressive, needless to say. And they have three cities, so they have a pretty decent industrial base to start off with. So, you know, there's a lot of potential there for the Tunisian state. The idea behind the Tunisian state is they're supposed to be sort of like the Huescatan Collective, except think more of a bastion of Islam. Like, not necessarily uh, like, oh my god, brainwashed individuals type thing. It's more like, uh, you know, we accept all members of Islam, whether you're sh uh, Sunni or Shiite or so on and so forth. And that's kind of the idea behind the Tunisian state is to escape... Uh, the the terrible fighting that tears over the Middle East, um, and then you know they move into uh, the Tunisian state, maybe a place to make their own. It's basically people who don't want to be involved with the fighting, who are more interested in uniting as one religion uh, for whatever reason, so on and so forth. But let's try to keep that from getting too political. There, that's just the idea behind the country. All right, and then the other one here's Greenland, the technocracy of Greenland. That's right. Essentially, this is an enig enigmatic, mysterious people who uh, who are incredibly, incredibly technologically advanced. Basically, they can build all the best shit right off the bat. And I did that on purpose because, A, their population is ludicrously small. So, like, <laughs> look at that. They have a population of 1.3 million. They have a total of 18 MPUs. So, they can build the best shit in the game right off the bat. But they cannot do anything with it. Like, I mean, they can, may, they might be able to take over Iceland, but still, it's another situation of where there's no NPUs there. So, any any reasonably uh, 
a massed army, say, for example, the UK, would pretty much steamroll them, despite the fact that they do have incredibly powerful technology. However, an ambitious leader could actually take Greenland and spread into Canada if they moved fast enough with very advanced troops, but again, they don't have the, indu they don't have the industrial advantage, so more than likely, if they don't move fast, they're going to lose. So, you know, taking Newfoundland might be a good idea. Again, you don't have a lot of MPUs, but at least you have an industrial base. So, yes, the idea is that they are incredibly enigmatic, secretive, and mysterious, but they have absolutely insane technology compared to the rest of the world in 1910. All right, so that brings us to the final part of my mod. Um... This is the United States, obviously, and I have broken it up into three separate regions, and even then I added one more for good measure to kind of give a little bit of more of a threat in the Northwest. So, the first one is the Empire of Texas. The Empire of Texas is supposed to be kind of like a joke. Like, honestly, all these, all these factions are kind of a joke to a degree. But this one is probably the most obvious of the jokes. The Empire of Texas is led by the godlike Texan Emperor who rose amongst the cattle lords and overthrew the U.S. government in the south, uh, southwest after the, uh, after the Civil War. They saw that basically it was hungry, power-hungry oil barons and cattle barons who saw that the U.S. was weak after the after the Civil War, and they decided um, that they were going to push the Union out altogether because the Union didn't really have the power, the manpower, and the ability to fight anymore. Uh, and public opinion was just like, "Come on, we we can't do. We don't want to do. We don't want to fight anymore. We don't care. Let them go. If they want to go, let them go." So that's how the Empire of Texas was created. And as you can see, they've been pretty successful. They've actually initially started out in this region here, but have moved east and taken more lands and moved west and south and taken more lands, um, taken some from Mexico, as you can see. And they have proven to be incredibly successful and a very, very powerful force. They're also known for sending in hordes of ravenous cows to fight battles when manpower is just too precious to waste. That's right. So then you've got the Union of Socialist California. Again, a joke. <laughs> and probably the second most obvious joke of all of these factions I've created in this game. The Union of Socialist California essentially based out of their, their fortress city of San Francisco have expanded east against the United States. It's around, the, it's around the same time the Empire of Texas was created. They saw the Union was weak um, and that you know there was a lot of troubles going on, so they decided to move on and kick some ass. And as you can see, they have spread all the way into parts of Canada and have taken over a just a whopping portion of the United States. Uh, and of the two of these of the three factions, the new uh, American factions that have been added, the Union of Socialist California is arguably the most uh, has the most potential because it has a lot of cities, it has a lot of industries. Um, so it could very well prove to be more than a match for you know the Empire of Texas. Now again, none none of these factions are any match for the United States if the United States actually gears for war against them. So keep that in mind. The last country that has been added to the uh, American uh, continent is the Alaskan Republic. Uh, now the Alaskan Republic, same scenario, same stories basically. Um, it was just it formed out of nonsensical reasons. It's not even it was never even necessarily a part of the United States. It was a part of Russia. The United States never got a chance to buy it, essentially, and they rebelled against the Russians and created the Alaskan Republic. And uh, they are based out of Juneau there. And um, yeah, they're spreading east. They've they've taken many of the Canadian lands, but Canada, uh, because of the the low population of the areas in the west there, have not even bothered trying to keep those lands. Um, they basically can't justify it for whatever reason. 
Now again, all of these new additions could probably be very easily taken over, but they pro they plain as them provides quite an interesting challenge, especially the Empire of Texas, because the Empire of Texas tends to be a bit unstable, as you can see down there. Um, and I've seen cr the creation of new kingdoms like Dixie and so on and so forth out of that particular area. So yeah, I think that's pretty much all of the factions I've added in. I hope this looks interesting to you. There are plans to add additional factions into the game uh, as I come up with them, essentially. Or if I see an area that I feel like needs to be debuffed, for example, Austro-Hungary, there's a good chance that might happen. Probably the Ottoman Empire, maybe. I don't know about the Ottoman Empire, though, because they always fall into instability and disarray within 50 turns anyway um, and I'm also considering um, like maybe adding something to Australia uh, maybe something to add in South America because I didn't really give much attention to South America because it's already really you know it's already pretty divided honestly um, but I don't know if there's any like real personality I could add to it already it's already so full of it so, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I might do something with South America. I just haven't really come up with anything. And like I said, it's already it's already an interesting uh, – any of these countries really could be an interesting country to play as, uh, especially with the United States right in the north. So, you know, that's something that's always kind of a scary thought is the United States declaring war on you early in the game because you won't stand a chance. Um, just like if I tried to declare war on the United States right now as poor little Djibouti. There's literally nothing I could do. But yes, so that is my mod. There will probably be some additional changes and features and so on added to it as time goes on. Um, I'm probably going to adjust some of the unit values because I just haven't thought of uh, how I would do it or what units I want stronger on the templates. So it's still a work in progress. But... With that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, this little overview video of my mod for Making History the Great War. I might make one for um, Making History Gold, but I make no guarantees because that's a lot uh, harder, essentially. It takes a lot more time than this does. Um, this one's actually a very easy-to-use editor. It's not very time-consuming. I mean, I've probably put in about 10 hours working on this so far. But all things considered, as much as I've done, that's not that bad. But anyway, this has been Comedy's Hot Bro. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, like, and subscribe and all that good stuff. And if you like my mod, then thumb up on the Steam Workshop. Every little bit helps, um, especially if I know that it's something that you guys uh, are enjoying. I mean, if you don't really care about this, then, then you know, that's fine. <laughs> I just thought this, is, this has been a great way to keep my mind off things. So, But anyway, I will see you all next time.